We promised to do a build inside the Montec King 95. This is the Pro Edition because it has all the additional fans and the fan controller with RGB controller. But we decided to go a step further. Rather than just making a build and taking it apart later, we're actually gonna go and build our workstation inside of it, which would mean that we're doing a bit of an upgrade and also adding many Montec components. So we're gonna go with the case with the included fans and some additional fans because it can fit more in there. We're gonna go with the cooler and also the Montec power supply. So it's gonna be a mostly Montec with other components in it. And it's gonna be kind of a long-term review. Uh, if we find any issues or any things that we might need to highlight, we might make another video to kind of go through it. Or if it's uh, six months down the line that you wanna ask us any questions, just drop them down in the comments below. For the main build, we'll be using an AMD system. So it's an X570. Um, this is a pretty ridiculous motherboard. Um, probably wouldn't need to go this far, but our old motherboard was one of the original X570 and it keeps having USB problems. Uh, I understand that this board is newer and it shouldn't have that same problem. So we'll give it a try. Uh, for the CPU, we're using a 16 core 5950X, which is their last gen highest end CPU. And to be honest, for the work that we do with the video editing and the photo editing, most of the workload is actually done on a graphics card. So we don't need the latest and the greatest. And this is much easier to handle in terms of power and also cooling. For memory, we're gonna go with a 32 gig kit from Corsair. This is the Avengers Pro. And it's, again, middle of the road. There are better ones, but uh, this is still pretty significant. It's a 3200 mega transfer this kit with C16. So it's a pretty fast kit for its generation. The star of the show is obviously gonna be the graphics card and it's a 4090. Like, it's the best that you can get right now for video and photo editing and, well, it's gonna be in this build. Because it's also our editing station, we're gonna be using a trusted Intel 10 gig NIC. This is super important for us. Uh, we have a 10 gig network here in our studio and I don't know, this is probably one of the best purchases I've done on eBay in the last 10 years. I have probably about 10 of them and they're about $25. So it's an absolute steal. Uh, but you do need to have the infrastructure to support it. One thing to highlight. So this case is convertible. So you can have it like this, where it looks like a fish tank with a curved glass, or you can remove the front panel, uh, move the fans in uh, to the front and have it that way. We've actually done the review and we have a slight correction. One of the things that you have to do when moving the, this fan uh, section forward, you also need to invert them because right now they're pulling air from the outside. So when you turn it this way, they're actually <laughs> pushing the air out. So what you want to do is invert those fans so you have a flow through design. Uh, we're going to do that in a bit. One last thing, storage wise, we have two NVMe drives. We've got a one terabyte drive, which is pretty old right now, which could be our main drive for the OS and any general files. And we're actually using a Samsung 980 Pro, which is again, PC Gen 4, really, really fast drive, and really came down in price for our cache storage. So this is super useful when you've got big projects and you wanna have some local data to work through as you're editing. Uh, this speeds up the workflow like crazy. So that, that's definitely going inside. Uh, let's get into it. Like with all builds, we should start with a motherboard and work our way out. So you can put all the tiny components in, which can be covered up by a big cooler. So we're gonna start off with this motherboard, which is an ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme. It is still for the AM4 platform, but um, this particular one is actually 5000 series ready. So this is one of the newer boards from that era. Era, I say this as if it's an old thing. Most people would be very happy to get this generation right now. So. Uh, it's still really, really good. So we'll get into it. One thing that's kind of funky about this particular board, it's insanely heavy. Like, I'm not exaggerating it. I'm actually struggling to take it out. And this is a good test for this case because this is actually a, um, an extended ATX. So they call it an EATX board. So the ATX board would normally end with this screw hole right here. So we have an extra two fingers of an extra on this board. So I might need to change some standoffs inside there to accompany it. 
Um, I haven't actually checked if it supports it. I'm pretty sure this supports it because it's a very big, big case. But, um, well, we'll just do it live. It'll be fun. Start off with the CPU. Nothing special here. Just take the CPU and just drop it straight in. All right, that's probably the easiest thing we're going to do the whole day. Um, I think I can start taking off these um, M.2 uh, heat sinks. Again, they're very chunky on here. And this particular heatsink actually has a little screen on here from my memory, hence why it has a little cable here. And also a lot of hair from our cat. Now I can put in the two drives. So the first drive, which is gonna be our S drive, and that will just live in the top most slot. And just click in place. And it's good to go. And this already has the thermal pad cover taken off, so it's perfect. And then we just slot it back on. After the removing of this metal plate, we find two more M.2 slots, which is great. So you can have actually up to three on this particular board without any problems. And again, they all have little covers for them. So I'm gonna use this top one, but in this generation, it doesn't really matter. So put the drive here and remember to also remove sticker from this side as well otherwise you're literally not going to be cooling anything this is a premium board it feels premium in every way one thing we'll probably need to do once we've set it all up is upgrade the bias as well because a board like this it has if it hasn't been used for a while it's definitely out of date and there might be security vulnerabilities and general optimizations you might even get some extra performance uh, depending on a particular use case so always update your bias what we're gonna do is actually install the cooler because for the cooler, we need to remove these brackets. We're using a Monte cooler and we have a review of this coming up in next few weeks, hopefully. Um, but we've already used it on our test bench. One of the things that Monte is focusing on is being value for money. And this certainly is one of those things, but they're not bad. They actually deliver really good results. So. A review is coming, so be on the lookout for that. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. For the AM4 sockets, what you need to do is first remove the existing AMD bracket and just follow the guide from, in this case, Montec. Uh, so they have their own little bracket that goes on. Uh, so you put in the two pillars, the bracket, and then at this point, you just kind of need to secure the bracket in place with just the four screws and then thermal paste and cooler goes on top. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, every cool is slightly different, but I, I like this method. It's not convoluted in any way, and it's reusing the back plate from the AMD socket, which is quite nice. Uh, I do recommend taking the existing bracket and putting that inside the motherboard box, otherwise you'll probably never find it again. But the likelihood, if you're selling your motherboard or changing it out, uh, you'll go, oh, that's where it's from, and at least put it back on. So that's gonna be very useful. For our thermal paste, we're using the good old trusted MX4 from Arctic. I do recommend using the little spatula to spread it. So you ensure that your thermal paste coverage is even, and it's okay to have a bit more than what you actually need. And since you're using a spatula, if you make a mess like me right now, it doesn't matter. The most important part is just kind of evenly spread it around the center part, because then when you apply the cooler, it will actually spread the rest of it for you. Now, you take the cooler, make sure that you haven't got the stick on it because um, I've done that before, last week, don't tell you. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, what you can do, because I've had these, so for this, particular cable, for this particular cooler, you actually need to install the screws first uh, and then you could put in the fan after. What you want to do is straight away think about where your cable placement is going to be. Uh, here you have the ARGB and you've got the fan headers and these fan headers also have a, a connector in between them so it kind of daisy chain them, so it's nice. But just cable route them to the right side straight away so you don't need to mess around with them later. So it kind of goes in. This actually top panel comes off. It comes with a little screwdriver but uh, you can use your own. I prefer the be quiet one from years ago now. So you'll also immediately see, I'm gonna have an issue with my RAM. The clearance here, 
but this, this can actually go up, so it's not too bad. I can also, if I really wanted to, move this fan on the other side, so it's not too bad either. The important part here is to ensure that you put in the tension in an even way, just to ensure that the cool has actually got proper good contact. This is the point where you need to make a decision. Uh, if you're gonna keep your fan here and have optimum airflow, or if you're gonna move it around, or if you're gonna lift it. So you can take your RAM stick, and you can put it in. In this case, the RAM on the outside is empty. And you can see, I actually need to lift it by about a finger in order for the second RAM stick to fit in. Let's try that first. Let's see how much of the surface area we lose for it. So you can remove it for altogether. Put the second RAM stick in. So it's like in place, ready to go. Now, let's put this on top and see. Like you will lose some efficiency in this. But in our case, this is not a particularly power hungry CPU. It will actually be okay if it's got only one fan working at the full capacity and the airborne fan is just assisting. There you go, nice and straight. So I'm losing about a finger worth of air just is gonna be going over the top, but I think it's gonna be okay. And then what you do for the other fan, you're just gonna to have to slide it in. So have a look at the direction. So I believe these fans, eh, these ones don't have directions on them, but normally the direction is towards the back unless they've specifically been called inverted. So this would mean the air is flowing that way. And I want my cable sticking out at the top here so I can cable tie it later. I'm gonna pull it through that way. Now, that's in place. And I just need the clips to secure it. And it's now nice and tight in there. It's not going anywhere. Same for the other. That's done. Since we're on this side, we can now take the ARGB and the two fans. So the two fans, you can connect them up together to today's genome. And then on the motherboard, you'll have your CPU optional fan and main CPU fans header. So I'm gonna plug it straight into the main CPU fan header, which could be this one right here. Now, since you're here, you can do the good kind of cable management or you can do just stuff it in there and hide it nicely underneath. As long as it's not touching anything. And let's find where the best spare port is for the RGB. Probably gonna use one of these. So I've got two here. So I'm gonna use one, one with the cooler and I'm gonna use the other one for the fan controller inside the main case. Now that we have the CPU, the memory, the cooler and all the cables for the main, well, PC sorted, we can now start building inside the case. Realistically speaking, this is the brains. All you're missing is a graphics card and a power supply for this, and it just works as a PC. But um, let's make it look nice and get plenty of cooling in. So we can move into the case now and start taking it apart and start building within it. You can check out our review of this case uh, on the channel. It's already live. Um, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty details because I've covered a lot of that in the case review, but uh, we're just going to show you how, how and what we're going to do in terms of the build. Uh, but one thing to do is take all the panels off, which makes it so much easier. And then just unscrew these two screws here to open up the back panel, because that makes you know a, a world of difference. Uh, having access to all your components while you're building is just a godsend. Montex has done a really good job on making sure that people have easy access and you don't actually need tools besides a screwdriver to take it all apart, which is nice. We're gonna try to put in the motherboard. Um, it is heavy though, so after you put that in, it's gonna be much harder to do any fiddling around inside this case. And now, this is where we're gonna get into that first issue that we've kind of discussed earlier. Um, this motherboard is wider. It's actually wider than this case. I think I need to move these fans forward now because I won't be able to do it later. Let's do a little test fit. Put that inside and put it in place because the motherboard can't do it. So let's do that first. So for this to work, what you need to do is unscrew the bottom fan I, but you don't need to unplug it, just move it to the side. Unscrew the two screws on the side panel and open up. It has a little bracket here. Now, up at the top here, there is a little screw that drops down a, a plate. And you can use that screw to screw this back in to secure it in place. Uh, you can also screw on the bottom screw now as well. 
And then what you need to do is unscrew these fans and flip them. Uh, otherwise, they'll be pulling air from inside the case outwards. And you probably don't want that, um, depending on your fan orientation. But generally speaking, you want the air to go through the whole fan and just out the back. So let me just do the flipping and we can carry on with the build. With the bracket changed over and the fan swapped around, uh, they're now pulling the air from the front and just going straight through the whole case. Uh, and this is where I'm gonna put the mesh cover on the front later on. Let's now get into just installing the motherboard. Even though the motherboard technically doesn't fit where it will be overhanging, it shouldn't be much of a problem because first of all, the connectors are on the side anyway. So as long as I connect them up, it should work. So let me just get this back down. Right, oh, that's so heavy. So they can have some cables here, just move them in. And it fits. So all the screws do align, except that even these ones do, but because there's actually no more screws on the motherboard itself. Uh, so it just overhangs. So it's kind of it'd be funky because the cables come out, you can actually see from this angle, the cables will come out here and kind of plug in here. So I think it might actually look even cleaner than it would originally. So let's have a look at that. One thing I really like about this case, it actually comes with a pre-organized uh, screws. So it's just very convenient. Um, when I took it apart, I put the screws back into the box, which is labeled, it's much easier to work with. All the screws are now in, and now we can start getting into the next stage, which is gonna be the power supply. There are two screws to remove, which opens up the back panel. I wish this panel had some sort of clicky mechanism in there. So if you fl flip it around or stuff like that, it'll be easy to kind of control, because at the moment it just kind of flops around, but it's not the worst. Uh, I do like these uh, cable ties. You can actually put them through and really secure them. Uh, to put some quite a bit of pressure in. So if you have loads of cables in here, that would really help. Let's get the power supply out. Right, so we have a nice little bag for cables and well-packaged power supply itself. Power cable we don't need. That would be the one CPU cable and a second CPU cable. Just for the CPU, obviously the main cable for the for the motherboard I do need at least a single SATA connector so uh, two cables and that's to power the fan hub and the ARGB so there's actually two SATA connectors for that so we need that one thing that's really cool about this power supply it's actually using 12 volt high power cable so you have a single connector for the 4090 rather than having to use you know two or actually realistically three of these and then using the connector, the, the dongle thing. It's just a single connector. That is gonna be awesome. This power supply comes with five years warranty and you can see all the cables that are listed on the back. So obviously it does support the uh, ATX 3.0, which is five, PCIe 5.0 ready. So the native 16 pin connector for the NVIDIA cards. Well, hopefully that's gonna become a standard for all kinds of cards. But it's up to 450 watts. And because this is an editing workstation, uh, we're not gonna overclock that graphics card ever. So therefore 450 is plenty. And now um, we're gonna mount it, the power supply sideways. So we have the intake from the side and pushing the air out of the back. So it's nice and cool. It's a shame that the logo is upside down. I'm gonna cheat the system. If the guys from Montec are watching this, why don't you just leave this without glue on so people can do it themselves? Because that looks better. I'll make it magnetic, but then it's more expensive. So don't make it more expensive. The one thing that's kind of important about this case, uh, there is actually a lot of space. So I remember that I, I poked this through, but I didn't actually put it back in. So the grommets in this case do tend to fall out if you pull them really hard, but they're not too hard to put them back in, so it's not too bad. As part of cable managing, I've decided to install three fans on the top, and this case allows you just to take off the, the roof, install the fans, and then put the whole thing back in. So we'll use 320 mil fans, basically take off the whole panel. 
Make sure to remember the orientation of it because when you put it back in, you kind of want to make sure everything aligns. And I'm just going to put three fans in with exhaust functionality. In this case, uh, these are not reversed fans, I don't believe. No, these are just normal fans. Uh, those ones at the front are reversed. So what you need to do is mount, if you want to have air coming out, you need to mount it with the backside pointing outwards. So the wind goes this way. And that's another thing to, to do is if you're not sure, you just spin it and see which way the wind is going. It's more, more, more wind coming this way. Since I took this off this way, my back of the case is here. I want to make sure that my cables run towards my back because the fan controller is just over here. So I want to make sure that the cables kind of end up in the same position-ish. And if you did use 140 mil fans, all you need to do is just align it with the outer area. So same thing, just align it with the outer area. But you can only install two of them. But you can have more of a gap. So if you have a particular cooler, a particular cabling that you have on the inside, um, you might be better off with 140 mil fans. I just want to get three 120s in there just to kind of fill out. Once you've installed all of them, you've not nicely screwed on. Uh, I'm leaving a little gap in between them. It doesn't really matter here. Um, just grab all the cables, throw, throw them inside. And if you don't have any interference, they just click in. Then you can just take it and screw it shut. There are a few different screw types that this case is using. So these screws are different from the ones we have here. So if you do take them out, just make sure to have them to the side, leave them organized so you don't get quite confused of what you used. Uh, I recommend for novice builders to take a picture of a screw before you fully take it out so you know exactly where it goes. It just helps. Now, once that's in, what you need to do, you can also can have a rat's nest of the cables here. So what you need to do is just kind of pull them all across onto the other side. We have to cable manage them now. With the cables pulled through, all you need to do now is plug them into the, the header up top. And since all the fans actually have similar RPM, it's going to be great because you can control all the fans at the same time. So what if you just take them and just plug them in? So by default, you have like one, two, three, four um, fan headers free and three RGB uh, uh, controls. So literally for the three additional fans that were installed. So perfect. Technically speaking, you still have one more slot for a fan. I uh, don't know what reason you might have that for. I think it's just the, the controller that they had. But uh, if you did have an additional fan, you could wire it up without really using any of your motherboard connections, which is kind of cool because technically speaking, at least this motherboard has loads of connections. So I could probably have double amount of fans that I have right now and st still have some leftovers. The little hoop and loop fasteners are really great because it tightens everything up and there's still loads of space before you even come towards the back panel. Because if you made it a complete mess, you can just hide it, don't worry about it. But this is all hidden away, and it's nice and clean. It's actually really, really good. There's nothing sticking out at all. And we've got a bunch of things connected. And what we need to do now is just connect up the graphics card, put in the network card, and we're actually done. So for the graphics card, what we need to do is first, Check which ports we need. Because it's a flat, it's a thick boy, and it connects from here, so we need second, third, and fourth. It's in. What I want to do now is just screws in. There's no sagging or anything. This card is really good for that, actually. It's quite squarish. It doesn't want to sag. Now, the network's card below, it's probably the least new and least good looking item in here, but probably one of the most important ones. And we'll just plug in the graphics card cable. Make sure it clicks properly, otherwise, you know, there's been problems with these cables and you don't want your system to have a graphics card melt down. And we're done. All we need to do now is just plug it in and test and see if it boots. Moment of truth. Is it going to power up?
it did. The USB-C cable wasn't plugged in, so it was just laying on the cable, on the pan. But, it did turn up. <laughs> it's a shame that these, ca these uh, fans are inverted. But, all the lights are on. Still loading, you see the little digital here. So, the SIP the, is checking from memory right now. It's nice to have a little display, you know, exactly what's going on. And it boots. We're good. So, with this in mind, we uh, sorted. Well, there we go. That's the... The build is complete. And we've decided to finish this build with a mesh panel at the front. Because I want to get the most out of these fans, pulling fresh air into the system and cooling it. Uh, providing a kind of a quiet, and a high efficiency system. Um, I would love to know from you guys in the comments below, what do you prefer? Do you prefer it with the glass front? So, something like this. Or, like that. I think this looks almost as good as the glass. I'm not a fan of the little curve and especially the cut in between. But um, the case itself, I'm definitely a fan of. And to be honest, Montex has done something pretty cool by bringing down the price of all these components. Um, all the Montex components here are very competitive compared to the others. And they seem to deliver well. They've got all the features you would need and then some, including some extra cables you don't really need, but pretty cool. Uh, in the end, I end up with just a single cable that's visible at the front here. Um, that crafts got this kind of exposing the big cables <laughs> for the USBs. But hey, the rest of it, it looks very smooth. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this. Um, let us know if you want to see something more original than this. We'll see you guys in the next one.